Hey everyone, it's Mariana, and now that Game of Thrones is sadly done for the year, I wanted to give you my general thoughts on Season 6 and what I think were the top 5 best and worst things about it. This video will have all kinds of spoilers, so make sure you're caught up on the show before watching any further. So Game of Thrones Season 6 was an interesting experience. It had some ups, it had some downs, a lot of the things that have been going on for a while were finally paid off, we got some exciting reveals, but we also had had a few storylines that were a bit underwhelming. The best way that I can describe this season to you is to say that it was uneven. It was very clear where they put most of their effort and money and what the writers wanted to focus on the most. And don't get me wrong, I love Game of Thrones. It is my favorite show and it will most likely always be my favorite show. It is my number one fandom. It's the only show that has me listening to podcasts. I am invested in all kinds of theories. You already know that I've read all of the books and I'm really excited to read the next book whenever it comes out. I have Funko Pops, I have posters, all kinds of stuff. So when I say something negative about this show, it's not because I hate it, because I don't. I love it. I just don't think this season was their best, even though it had some amazing moments in it and what I think is the best season finale of the entire series to date. If I were to rank the episode episodes of this season, my top five would look like this. At number five, episode two, Home. This is the one where Jon Snow comes back, which of course was exciting, and I thought that scene was done really well. I was very anxious when that was happening, even though I had a pretty good feeling that he was going to come back. This is also the episode where we had Bran go back to Winterfell and see Lyanna Stark and young Hodor and his dad, Ned Stark, as kids, and that flashback sets up a lot of stuff for later in the season, so that was really interesting to see. And we also had the awesome moment between Tyrion and the dragons where he unchains them. It was just a really, really nice scene. And number four, episode seven, The Broken Man, we have the Hound coming back in that one, which I was actually more excited about than I thought I would be. Ian McShane has a small, awesome role in this episode. We also have Bronn coming back on screen and his back and forth with Jamie is really funny. And speaking of Jamie, Jamie versus the Blackfish was hilarious and really well written as well. Just a lot of good dialogue in the episode that could have been pretty bland and transitional aside from the Hound coming back, but I really, really liked that episode. At number three, episode five, The Door. It was one of the most heartbreaking episodes of the entire show. We got to find out why Hodor says Hodor, and we also get to see him go which was really sad and we got to see the crazy attack from the White Walkers and the Whites which looked really cool. We got to find out where the White Walkers came from to begin with so that was interesting. We got a new Red Priestess there for a minute and we also got a great moment between Jorah and Daenerys where she finally forgives him and sends him away to find the cure for Grayscale. And number two, episode nine, The Battle of the Bastards, this cinematically impressive episode that I think most of us really enjoyed. The battle itself was done really, really well. It was filmed really well. The sound, the cinematography, everything looked great. And we finally got to see Ramsey go, which a lot of us were excited about. I know some people thought that he didn't get what he deserved, but I thought it was very satisfying. And also in this episode, Marine was really, really interesting as well with Daenerys flying around on her dragons and burning the ships and the moment between her and the Greyjoys great episode. And at number one, episode 10, The Winds of Winter. I don't think any of you are surprised here. I am not going to spend a lot of time talking about it because I've already raved about it in my recap. So if you want my thoughts on it, you should check that out. But I thought the episode was excellent. And as I mentioned, the best season finale that we've had on the show so far. So as I said earlier, I thought season six was pretty inconsistent. So before I get into my top five favorite things about the season, I have some criticisms to discuss with you. So let's talk about what I thought were five 
worst things about it and these are in no particular order. First of all, the worst storyline for me this season was Marine. Dorn gets an honorable mention here because they are generally the worst storyline of the show. Not in the books, but in the show they are. And since they were only in two episodes this season and one of those was saved by Lady Olena's presence, they are not on this list, but Marine is because I just had a really hard time caring about this storyline. They did have some really good moments eventually, but in general, I just don't think the writers knew what to do with that when Daenerys wasn't there and they completely wasted Tyrion this season except for a couple of good scenes that he had but generally his character was wasted on awkward conversations and that was not making me happy because he's one of my favorite characters. I was just struggling with the storyline, I was struggling to care and like I said they just seemed to not know what to do with that whole situation. My issue number two has to do with the dire wolves. What dire wolves? Exactly. Now, I get that this has to do with the budget and they have a lot going on already, so they just don't have the money to do the dire wolves, but this is something that they have been setting up since season one, and these dire wolves are so important to the Starks, and instead of actually seeing them do anything interesting on screen, we got Shaggy Dog decapitated off screen and we got Summer just charging into the group of whites that were attacking Bran and dying that way. And Ghost, who is thankfully still alive, was barely present this season where logically he should have been around Jon Snow almost the entire time. And once again, I do understand that this has to do with the budget, but as far as the storyline goes, they never really cared to explain it on the show or make sense out of it. So to me, as an audience member, this is kind of disappointing, very disappointing, because I love seeing direwolves on screen and I think they are such an interesting part of the show that has been there since season one. The third issue I have with the season is some of the lapses in logic and logistics here because even though this is not a new thing, I feel like it was more prominent in season six. This is where we have Alaria killing the entire Martell family when her original goal was to avenge Oberyn and his entire family dead is probably not what he would have wanted. This is where we had Arya running and jumping around with terrible abdominal wounds that should have been a much bigger problem for her. This is where we had some characters navigating navigating through these lands faster than what they probably should have. I have talked about a bunch of these in my recaps, so I am not going to list every single one, but you guys know what I'm getting at here. My issue number four has to do with these happy coincidences that kept happening throughout the season and the level of predictability that comes with them because of some of the TV slash movie logic type of writing. And this kind of ties in into my logic issue that I just talked about, but here's what I mean. We had Brienne saving Theon and Sansa last moment for dramatic effect. We also had Cold Hands saving Bran and Mira last moment for dramatic effect. We had the Knights of the Vale showing up Lord of the Rings style when all seems to be lost for dramatic effect. You know what I'm talking about here, right? And with that comes a level of predictability because while we're watching these characters in peril, we know that, for example, Brienne is around looking for Sansa, and if nobody saves Sansa and Theon, they are going to go right back to Ramsay, which would make zero sense because they just escaped and it was a big deal. Same with Jon Snow. We had a pretty good idea that he wasn't just going to be brought back from the dead to lose this major battle and die again in a short amount of time. That's just not what it looked like was going to happen and so that kind of gives the show a level of predictability that wasn't there before. In a way the show used to take more risks killing off main characters left and right because they were doing something stupid or because they were being stubborn and yet this season we looked at Arya being stabbed and we said to ourselves no this is not how Arya Stark dies and I feel like if that were to happen in earlier seasons there would be serious 
serious consequences for her. And finally, the inconsistent writing that I keep talking about, which can really apply to all of the previous issues that I talked about, because for every problematic scene, there are multiple really good scenes or great scenes in the show. But what bothered me the most about the inconsistent writing this season is the fact that the characters were acting out of character based on what we learned about them throughout the five previous seasons. Once again, Arya, who is definitely smarter than strolling around this city while she knows there are assassins after her because she went rogue. We have Peter Baelish acting strangely and just laying his cards out on the table, which I really hope is some kind of master plan of his and he really is not revealing himself the way that it, the show wants us to think he is. We also have Sansa who in one scene wants to be best friends with Jon and in the next doesn't trust him with valuable information. In one scene she wants to save Rickon and then soon after she gives up without even trying. In one scene she says nobody should trust Peter Baelish and yet she is letting him get under her skin inconsistent is what I'm saying. And now that half of you have rage quit this video because of my complaints, let's talk about my top five favorite things about season six once again in no particular order. First of all, the last two episodes, I am not going to spend a lot of time talking about them because I just mentioned them in my ranking of top five episodes of the season. I also raved about them in my recaps, so check those out. But basically, they were great and they were not only visually great, they were also episodes that paid off a lot of things and they were a great ending to the season, so good job definitely one of the best parts of the season and this is where the money and the effort definitely went the second thing that i loved about the season were all of the smaller roles i already mentioned ian mcshane as brother ray who was amazing and i really wished that he didn't get killed off so quickly also, we got Blackfish, who was amazing for the short time that he was on screen. Liana Mormont, of course. What a great little girl. Everybody loves her. Pretty much every character from Bran's flashbacks, the younger versions of characters that we already know. We also got to see Benjamin Stark again and quite a few more. They did a great job casting the new characters and bringing back some cool characters from before. All of this expanding the Game of Thrones universe and making it more interesting. My third favorite thing about the season were Bran's visions that gave us so many great moments. First of all, of course, they gave us some important reveals which were exciting and I think in general the visions looked really well. I liked the way that they did them but what my favorite thing about them was is that I got to look at the past. I am somebody who really wants those spin-off shows and movies that would potentially show Robert's Rebellion or anything that has to do with the Targaryens pretty much either some expanded information on characters who are no longer on the show or going back further into the past. I would love to see all of that and Brand's visions gave us some of it and I would love to see more because I really hope they will continue doing those and perhaps reveal even more information about the past. My favorite thing number four is the increasing amount of magical elements in the show because when Game of Thrones started out the magic was more of a myth. It was something that possibly existed in the past but really wasn't around that much and as the show went on on starting with the ending of season one more of these magical elements and mystical occurrences kept coming up and now we have full-grown dragons we have an undead army we have old spells and visions and prophecies and people coming back from the dead and i am just very excited to see how the show integrates all of these magical elements into what started off as mostly a show of political games in somewhat of a fantasy setting there's a lot more magic going on in the books at this point and i do understand that the show can't do all of it because they would have to keep introducing new stuff all the time but I am very excited to see what is next because I think 
Towards the end of the show, this is going to be full-blown high fantasy. And last, but certainly not least, the Stark comeback is great. I am absolutely loving it. For so many episodes, the poor Starks have been getting into more and more shit and going from bad to worse in their situations, and it is so satisfying to see them start getting back on their feet. They took back Winterfell, those Bolton banners are gone, Stark banners are back up. We had a wonderful King in the North moment, which I think even more exciting things are going to come from that. We have Sansa back in Winterfell, nobody's torturing her anymore. We have Arya back on her path of revenge, as disturbing as it is, finally killing Walder Frey, which was very satisfying to see. I am just happy for the Starks and it's good to see something good happen to them and that is definitely one of my favorite things of the season. That's it for my best and worst of Game of Thrones season 6. I would love to know what you guys think so let me know in the comments below what were your favorite and least favorite parts about this season. How would you rank it compared to the rest of the seasons? I would say for me this would be somewhere in the middle, probably. My favorite seasons are still one and four, then followed by three, and then probably this season, or maybe season five. I'm not sure. I would need to rewatch the entire thing and give you a better idea, but my favorite seasons are definitely still one, four, and three. These are my top three seasons out of the six. Thank you guys so much for watching, as always, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I hope you're having an awesome day, and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye!